This one's so fun. Neither one of us really want to do it, but we're doing it anyway. It is called The Struggle is Real. And it's a hashtag. Hashtag The Struggle is Real. Mm -hmm. You see it everywhere. It's mm -hmm. memes. It's all the things. It is. Yeah. But usually, often, not, well, okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's about things that are sort of um, like, oh, I ran out of coffee creamer in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have to be. Aren't this more like first world probs? Oh, totally. But we get the first, you know, we get yeah. the struggle is real hashtag on those things. And we're yes. going to go a little deeper than running out of coffee creamer in the morning. So. Yeah. And we're going to share a little bit about us. We talk, um, you know, just a lot about just what we do and all mm -hmm. that and how we can help. And, um, and we do share our personal stories. We're not, I mean, we do that, but this one will be more kind of coming from the places of our own struggles. So yeah. We're going to go ahead and get started. By the way, I'm Polly Hamp. I'm Gina Berkmeyer. And this is Can They Say That. So here we go. We're glad you're here. Um, can they say that? 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 They can. And they will. Hello, podcast land. Greetings, greetings. <laughs> I am Polly Hamp. I'm Gina Berkmeyer. And today, our title for our podcast is The Struggle is Real. So real, y'all. Mm -hmm. So real. Um, it's funny because I think sometimes we see that hashtag, and it is a hashtag, The Struggle is Real. Yes. We see it pertaining to funny things um, that are like, you know, running out of time and having to choose between two wonderful things. The struggle <laughs> is real and it's sort of more tongue in cheek and making fun of. But today we're really, we're going to talk about some real struggles that are, that are present in our lives right now. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. I just started thinking about kind of how we're going to address this topic and kind of what do our insides match the outsides mm -hmm. on the world and how we kind of make fun of the struggle is real, which is hmm. a covering within itself of, True. I'm not really going to share about my struggle, but I'm going to make fun of it mm -hmm. kind of thing. I'll so. give you this fake funny struggle rather exactly. than what my real struggle is. Yeah. So before we get too far into this, couple disclaimers. We're going to talk about social media and what we tend to put out there. Uh, that's the royal we, like all of us, <laughs> not we, Polly and I. Uh, and also, we are not in any way, shape, or form advocating for you to take every tough thing that's going on in your life and put it on social media or throw it out to everyone that you meet, whether it's the beggar at the checkout counter or your best friend. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what we're doing here. So... Uh, but we do want to talk about authenticity. We want to talk about, share a little bit about our own struggles because I think that there's a good chance that it might be relatable mm -hmm. uh, for many of you listening and watching yes. if you're on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so would you like to start with your real struggle? I or... will okay. because I said I would. That's true. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... Part of my struggle these days is I have a lot, and this first sentence is going to sound like, oh, poor you. I have a lot of choices to make right now, mm -hmm. and I do recognize it as a gift and a blessing to have choices to make when it comes to my career, uh, but I'm having trouble believing that I actually have to make the choices. I'm mm -hmm. trying to do it all uh, because somewhere there is a voice that told me that that is how you are valuable is when you do it all and you do it all well. Mm. I will not say that is my voice. I think I've adapted to that voice as being my own, but I think I learned that somewhere along in my story. And in the midst of trying to do it all, I've encountered some health challenges. Mm. And Part of that is, I think of my own orchestration. I had let some things go. Uh, for anyone listening who knows me, they might be really surprised to hear this because I've always been an advocate of eating well and exercising well, resting well, taking care of ourselves spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. So this could be a shock for some people to hear this. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Um, but 
recently, in the past maybe year, um, that has been a little bit less the case for me. And I've been more a human doing than I've been a human being. Mm. And so my health has taken a direct hit. I just had a whole lot of lab work done and was shocked actually by the results of a lot of that lab work. Uh, but it has caused me to pause and take inventory and really think about doing some things differently. One of the reasons that I decided to even go get all this testing done was because I was experiencing this tremendous anxiety hmm. about just life in general. And I think if I'm really honest with myself, it's been more about the difference between what I feel called to do and what I should do. And so I'm stuck in the land of should Mm. and which is a terrible place I, I don't I shouldn't say I'm stuck there now because there's revelation that's come but I've been stuck in, a, in the land of should um, and I don't recommend that we should on ourselves or that we should on anybody else right. uh, because <laughs> it's, it's a place where we experience a lot of shame yeah. so so part of looking at this was what's going on with me physically are there things I need to address physically that can help with the anxiety that I'm feeling emotionally and mentally and there are and yet the truth is that I really need to address the anxiety. I needed to address the anxiety for what it is, and I need to continue doing that and being very mindful of, of what the root of that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Because I, um, you know, you can see it on YouTube land, but you can't see it in podcast land. Just the wrestle that you have just speaking it. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm grateful and proud of you for sharing Thanks. that. So thank you. Thanks. Because I have a feeling a lot of people relate to what you're saying, well, I including myself. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been an area where I've really had to do a lot of checking myself before I wreck myself because mm -hmm. it's really wrecking yes. to have your outside not match your inside, like to be constantly feeling like you have to project this thing mm -hmm. uh, to the world to even friends and family yes. because they all need you to be okay. Mm -hmm. And inside you're like, damn, this is painful. Yeah. And I gotta, and then there's the pressure to hurry up and get a grip on it because <laughs> right. everybody expects you to hurry up and get exactly. a grip on it. Wait, you of all people are supposed to have it together. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I'd like to think that probably some of that is just me projecting onto other people my own expectation that I should have it all together mm -hmm. and I think those who love me well don't have that expectation I think it's me believing that for myself mm -hmm. and then projecting it onto them yeah uh, but for those of you who don't know me and have some um deluded <laughs> idea that I have it together I just want to go ahead and take a big fat giant eraser and just like just erase that right off the board because yeah. I don't have it all together. So. I would actually like to meet the person who has it all together. I don't want to meet the person who has it all together. <laughs> I don't know if they exist. I don't, I, yeah, I don't believe Do you do. exist out yeah. there? Are you out are there? Are you out there? Yeah. Send us a message if you yeah, do. I we want to love. We want to talk to you. We want to talk to you <laughs> because I think all of us have that thing that we, the struggle that is actually real, not mm -hmm. just, not just a figment of our imagination right. or the thing that we're trying to cover up. So mm -hmm. I think we all struggle. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, trying to put a, it, it's lots of little pieces, but I think it's all one big picture of little pieces. Mm -hmm. And I think the number one, yeah, because when I, when I think it in my head, I feel it catching my throat. Like I want to kind of cry a little bit, mm -hmm. um, is uh, am I disqualified? Mm. Um, and am I disqualified to do what I do and what I've been called to do and what I think I've been called to do, but, um, and I don't know if the big picture is, am I disqualified? I think that's just part of the chunk of it. And I know you mentioned that you're going to talk about that tonight. We have those aha, I mean, tomorrow night in your, um, class, yes. think differently. And, 
and, and you know, it's like we have those moments like, oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> yeah, we're always hashtag me, me too together. It, yes. And so it's a different kind of me too. No, yeah. Sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, but it is, it's this thing. Am I disqualified? Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, it started in ministry, did ministry, uh, walked through a really difficult time, um, and, and during that ministry got divorced. Mm -hmm. And so really wrestled with who am I in all of this mm -hmm. and discovering truth about myself, discovering the lies that I believed about myself and the lies that I projected on others and the truth, finding out the truth about yeah. others. And it's a pretty dark place to walk mm -hmm. and a very hard place when you have this, this core belief of self your whole entire life, this internal dialogue, your whole entire life of, of questioning who you are. Mm -hmm. And then you get this opportunity to really discover it. And it's actually quite terrifying. It is. Um, because what happens is in that discovery that I found is it's like all these things surface, all these lies surface mm -hmm. in all the things that I thought I believed about myself that were true are not. Mm -hmm. And I am qualified. Mm -hmm. And I keep learning little bits of the qualification of the things. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing for me was who, and is today, is who am I? Who am I as this voice? Who am I as this person that has these opportunities to get to love and, and speak into and, and somewhat be qualified. And every time I question God, he reminds me um, right after I was separated, um, he reminded me, he's like, Polly, I have called you to the we are. And, um, and cherished, my ministry was called We Are Cherished. And, um, and, cher and cherished was just a part of it. And he kept saying, and remember, I am the I am. And we are is the plural of the mm -hmm. I am. And so I've called you to the we are. And you have those moments like, oh, thank you, God. You're yes. awesome. That means so much. And yes. then you get away from it for a little while. And you're like, but what does it mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? And so I um, get married again to an amazing man. We get to do ministry together. We own a counseling center together. We get to train and equip people, really build disciples without building a congregation. That is our, mm -hmm. our vision and our heart. And he um, has this incredible gift of teaching. And how do I be myself in those places? Because he invites, you know, it's, it's a very equal partnership and in the invitation of that. But I still wrestle with myself of mm -hmm. qualification. Mm -hmm. and, and how do I fit in this? And, and just as a wife, as a mom, as a grandma, mm -hmm. as, um, as a friend, as, as a coach, and, and getting to help people in... Um, It's hard. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that you touched on is like that doing. If I can do the things and it can show that, that I have a place here. Mm -hmm. But when I'm not doing the thoughts, the internal thoughts right. that I have um, that wrestle against the thing that I'm called to do, which one do I listen to? And mm -hmm. I think I need to listen to both mm -hmm. to, to find out. But... Anyway, so that's kind of where I am right now in my own personal struggle. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it seeps in to all parts of life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so interesting how it's like you can't compartmentalize this is, you know, my calling to this is my life at home, you know, because they all seep together mm -hmm. because I think it's a true belief of everything. Right. Expression of, of who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, more than what you do. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. I know it's raw and hard. Thank you. <sighs> and I appreciate the whole conversation around uh, qualified versus disqualified because that is a lot of my wrestle. A lot of my wrestle about putting myself out there without, with, without the guard, mm -hmm. right, is, uh, okay, so wait, hang on, she's saying these things and she and she's teaching this thing, but she has a struggle mm -hmm. and oh, she also has a past, right? 
And so what about the people from the past who have been absent the past two to, two to three decades of your life and then all of a sudden they see you and you're saying this thing and they're like, well, she's not qualified to do that. Mm -hmm. What is that about? And so recognizing that the very things that could make one feel wholly disqualified are actually the things that God takes and says, that is why you are qualified. Yes. Because of what I have brought you through and what I have brought you to. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't just about you. Yeah. Now you're going to go do something else with that. Mm -hmm. It's now there's a multiplication that needs to happen. And it's real easy from the cheap seats to say, so just keep focused on that, right? Mm -hmm. To tell myself, <laughs> just keep focused on that and God will take care of the rest. And I know he will. Mm -hmm. And shockingly, that doesn't always flip the switch on the anxiety. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Like, I love you, Jesus, and I totally believe in where you've put me and what you've wired me to do, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure I believe in what you've wired me and what you've put me here to do. <laughs> right. so, Are you sure I'm the right, right person? Did exactly. you get us mixed up? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Very true. Very yeah. true. And so I think part of it is the willingness to be known. Part of it is to say these things out loud. Mm -hmm. There is something called linguistic labeling that we know from a, from an internal perspective. Once our brain is able to linguistically label something that we're struggling with, the struggle can actually be uh, sort of mellowed. Mm -hmm. So there's two systems in the body. I won't go too far into this. Nerve alert. Um, <laughs> Love it. There's the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And there's some good research out there that by saying, this is what I'm feeling, rather than just try to keep doing to like run past whatever you're feeling mm -hmm. and experiencing, if you really just, this is what this is, mm -hmm. right? Because if you don't know what it is, you can't do anything about it. So when you label and you're allowed to say, it's just this, this mm -hmm. is just what it is. And I don't say just as in terms of small. Right. I, I say just in terms of it's just this because let's not make it more than it actually mm -hmm. is. Let's look at what it actually is. That the parasympathetic nervous system actually comes and sort of helps because now you've brought your cognition online. So now everything is kind of starting to, okay, now what do we do? Yeah. Right? It's good. And so, so if this is... If these struggles sound familiar, mm -hmm. or there's there's a hint of something in here that sounds familiar, I want to encourage you to start by labeling it and calling it out and sharing it with another person. Yeah. That doesn't mean you have to put it on your Facebook page. That doesn't mean it has to be a meme on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, but find someone in your circle who you trust. Yeah. Someone that has proven themselves worthy of your story. Mm. That's good and share your struggle yeah. and maybe even find out what theirs is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that, you'll find that as you're vulnerable in your own struggle, that you'll realize that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, we keep thinking a lot of times it's like, nobody else struggles with what I struggle mm -hmm. with. And so if I share it, they're gonna think I'm crazy. Right. And, um, and you might be. <laughs> I'm a little crazy, so it's fine. <laughs> in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yet, it's that place where it's like when you invite the vulnerability, somebody else might join you. Mm -hmm. And they might actually call you crazy. And then you have, you know, you get to realize that they may not be safe with your story. Right. And then label it what it is. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Really just kind of, it's almost like chunking it down to our, our own reality of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really good. Mm -hmm. The other thing, uh, I'd like to go ahead, if we can go and move into the actions, because sure. I think talking through these will take a little bit of time. Yes, Again, our actions will be listed in our podcast um, underneath uh, I think it's podcast notes, and then we'll also uh, put them on uh, YouTube and that mm -hmm. as well. But the first action we ask is to identify your struggle mm -hmm. and kind of like our pre, we need to start videoing our pre videos, our pre talks, not pre videos. Video of the pre video. Pre video of the video of the pre. <laughs> <laughs> My struggle is communication today. <laughs> so, Thank you for labeling that. Hashtag the struggle's real. Uh, 
<laughs> so I'm going to identify it, but yeah. I can't How talk. do you feel now that you've labeled it? I feel... Are you better? Uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I keep stumbling now. <laughs> so, no, my emotion... No. Okay. I'm good. So identify your struggle. And um, and do you want to talk a little bit about that before we go into the subcategory of identifying your struggle? Um... Well, I think identify your struggle. I think we probably need a little bit of that. Um, so if your struggle is anxiety, depression, um, addiction. addiction, any of those things where maybe some intervention might be needed. Where So this is like a grade level above, I just need to talk it out with a friend. Mm-hmm. Start there. Tell someone. That's always, always the first best mm-hmm. step is to tell someone. Uh, but it could be that it's a little bit deeper than I have a struggle with, uh, being real with my circle of friends, or I have a struggle with asking for help, Mm -hmm. or I have a, I have a small struggle with anxiety based around certain situations. That's one thing. If it's pervasive throughout your life, that is something where we really want to strongly encourage you to seek some intervention. Mm -hmm. And by that, we mean get get some professional help, look for a counselor. If you need help doing that, please send us a private message. Mm -hmm. We are fortunate enough to have some connections pretty much around, at least around North America. So um, so maybe we can help point you in the right direction if nothing else. Um, If you are not in the USA, uh, we have some counselors. I personally have some colleagues who do some great work through Skype. Uh, Mm -hmm. So um, that that is always an option as well. Yes. Okay, and so the second one is, um, what do you believe about yourself? And Mm -hmm. um, does the outside match the inside? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I had, I had very deep beliefs, core beliefs about myself, and it's that I'm not qualified Mm -hmm. or, and that didn't just start from divorce. Right. That I'm not qualified started way before I'm not that old but started a few years ago when I was just a wee lass and (laughs) yet I mean it so it's structural for me of Mm -hmm. what I believe about foundational Mm -hmm. about what I believed about myself and so really discovering that because there's layers to our self belief and I believe what it is is it's who am I after all the trauma after all of the life, after all of everything, who am I really and what is true about me? Mm-hmm. And so really asking yourself, what do you believe about yourself? Mm-hmm. And how do you see yourself? Mm-hmm. And I encourage you, one of the things, when I was walking through the highest level of my trauma and uh, re, not rewriting my narrative, but uh, editing. healing, if editing, you know, editing and healing through all the stuff I journaled like crazy Mm -hmm. and there were days I did not want to journal and so I bullet point Mm -hmm. and so if you're not a journaler um just bullet point some things just go okay what do I really believe about myself Mm -hmm. I'm not a good mother I'm not a good father Mm -hmm. um I you know I don't know if I'm strong enough I don't you know or I'm like the coolest person in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what are the beliefs that you have about yourself? And start writing them out Mm -hmm. because I think that's a big, huge part of a start of your journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think even, I I, I don't want to go too far into this. We don't really have the time. But there's room to write what you want to believe about yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Because when we do that, we can start looking at what are some choices and behaviors that we can lean into that start constructing that narrative that is more really what we want to believe in all likelihood what you want to believe about yourself is probably how God sees you yeah um and and how you've been wired um so Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we should pay attention to as well something that you said about what we believe about ourselves and and you were talking about it being structural um and foundational I think that what we believe not only can it it sets the foundation Mm -hmm. that can be set in our foundation it also determines our ceiling ah so i think whatever we believe about ourselves will keep can keep our ceiling very very low preventing us from getting to some of those places that we've been designed to get to yeah so i love that oh that's so good thanks 
Okay, the third um, action question for yourself is your internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have learned over the time is what am I constantly saying to myself? And uh, one of the things I learned when I just recently, not just recently, a year ago, got married, and I would preface all the things that I wanted and desired. And so I had this internal dialogue. I'd be getting ready or uh, just doing something, and I wanted to talk to Bob about something that I wanted to do or just anything. And I, I would preface, um, I know this might be crazy, but... This may sound crazy, but, and I realized that that was an internal dialogue that I had and I found the root to it of just really uh, prepping myself for rejection. Mm -hmm. And something that I have done for a very, is that structure, that foundation mm -hmm. of how um, I was rejected, but then also thought everything would be rejected. When you would ask for something, you would get the rejection. Yes. So by labeling it crazy, this may sound crazy. You've already minimized its value mm -hmm. to yourself. Yes. So that if the rejection comes, it doesn't hurt as bad. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's just a snippet mm -hmm. of my internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and so this week, today, right now, you're probably doing it right now, actually. Um, what goes through your head? What do you think? What is your internal dialogue? What is that movie that plays? What what do you see? What do you hear that is actually good for you, that that loves you, but then the ones that want to tear you down and beat you up? And sometimes they're super subtle. Oh, yes. Like you're in the kitchen and you make a mistake and you say, I'm so stupid. Mm -hmm. What did, what, who, Yeah. is that really you? Whose voice does that sound like? Yeah, so take that the next step. So keep, yeah. So whose voice does that sound like? So you can't do that. Um, you're going to fail at that. Mm -hmm. um, you should worry about what people are going to think. Don't you know what people think? Don't you know what you've already done? Whatever that dialogue is, or if you do this, you'll be rejected. Um, you can't do that. You're not good enough. Who does that sound like? Mm -hmm. Where is that voice from in your history? If you can identify that, you can make a conscious agreement to break from it, mm -hmm. and then you can begin to get help with that. One of the things that I give my clients to do with that negative internal dialogue is, do you know the counters that you can get, the counters you can get, they use them at amusement parks sometimes yes. and ballparks to count how many people are walking mm -hmm. through the door. So you click it. Yeah, you yes. click it. So you can get small ones like through Dick's Sporting Goods or, um, hey Dick's, well, you know. Yeah, Academy. Give us hey. love. Hey, Come give us Academy. love. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you can get one on Amazon. Amazon, love. Amazon. Um, <laughs> you get one. My point is get one. Because what happens is research shows us that we can often change, reduce a behavior. We can also increase. We can reduce a behavior by just observing how many times we engage in it. Mm. So get yourself a counter. Get one with a loop that you can put on a belt loop or a mm -hmm. purse strap or something like that. And when that hits, the I'm so stupid, you can't do that, what's wrong with me? Or I'm sorry. How many times do yes. you say I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry. So <laughs> click it. So click it. Okay. Now here's, here's, the, here's the thing. A lot of these are self-judgments. So if you say to yourself... I'm so stupid, and then you click, and you say, I can't believe I had to click myself. That's another click. Don't get stuck in that. <laughs> or don't get stuck in that. I can't believe I just thought that thing about myself, what's wrong with me? That's another click. So <laughs> just be careful, okay? This, you can go too crazy with that. So, so I'm gonna challenge you <laughs> that when you start like getting mad at yourself, I had a friend, um, Wendy, and she, she said when she would do that, instead of saying, dang it, I did that again, say, oh my gosh, Thank you, God, for pointing that out. Hmm. And what do you want to say about that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, and God might not say a thing, but it'll bring a peace because it, it kind of deflates it. Mm -hmm. And it, instead of getting in that cycle of, um, I always say the wrong, Wow, click. Um, <laughs> gonna start my Look, clicker. it's working already. Dang it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> The self-deprecation. Yes. Is that right? I think so. Okay. That was the word I was mm -hmm. worried about. But I'm not worried anymore because I said it. Self-deprecation. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing that, it's like, okay, um, 
Thank you for pointing that out. I'm so glad I'm catching it now. And if you're not there, if you're not there where yeah. you're in a space where you feel comfortable doing that, right. you can also say something very simple like, it's okay, I'm human. Yeah. It's okay, I'm human. Mm -hmm. People make mistakes. Yeah. No big deal. That kind of stuff, right? And, and so just working gently to change the dialogue. But you can just start by observing. Yes. Because... Creating awareness is a huge thing. Observation so, is the number one. <laughs> yeah, it's number Start. one. So. so, okay, so our time is up. We yes. are so glad you guys joined us. And for those who are listening to the podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel mm -hmm. at Can They Say That mm -hmm. and follow us there. You can see us interact, and sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's goofy, sometimes just don't. And, <laughs> and or follow us on Facebook. Uh, we post different things, books, resources, songs. We might do a Facebook Live here and there. So mm -hmm. go to Facebook, Instagram. Mm -hmm. We post our memes and things and comments there. And the same with Twitter. And it's all at Can They Say That. Yes. So just wanted to let you guys know that there are a lot more ways to reach us than mm -hmm. just podcast and YouTube. Yes. So we love you guys. Have Take a care of yourselves. Week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, YouTube. Uh oh. So seriously, go get the counter, okay? Because here's the thing. So when you get into this space of counting your judgments to yourself, there is something very powerful that happens. So when you do this, if it becomes overwhelming, cut it in half. Just do it from like morning to lunch, or something like that. Write it down. Maybe consider sharing with a friend who you hear judge themselves a lot, who you hear apologize a lot, who you hear call themselves stupid a lot. Maybe share with your friend, hey, I'm doing this thing. I bought an extra counter. Do you want it? Do you want to do it with me? And watch and see how you can encourage each other in changing that internal dialogue. I think it'd be powerful. We want to hear from you if you do it, okay? Yes. And be kind to yourself. Yes. And to everyone else. Yeah. And it can actually be kind of a fun game. It's like, oh my gosh, I just did it. Like I had clicked myself, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> right. it's, it's this thing that you'll start seeing it and, and don't listen what's happening to you, mm -hmm. but have grace for yourself mm -hmm. and just kind of enjoy the journey. We get to all do this together. That's right. So, so take care of yourselves yeah. and each other. Love. See you next week. Bye. Love you. Bye.